What is a PID controller? A PID, or Proportional Integral Derivative Controller, is a type of feedback control system. Some people find them frustrating due to their notoriously tricky tuning process, while others like myself appreciate their versatility and effectiveness. Regardless of where you stand, there is no denying that PID controllers are powerful tools used in a wide range of applications. Today, we'll explore what PID controllers are, how they're used, and how to tune them effectively, and dive into the details of how they work. PID controllers are widely employed in industrial control systems, stabilizing boats, improving helicopter control, managing engine performance, and thousands of other applications. How PID controllers work. A PID controller aims to reach and maintain a desired output level by adjusting a control variable. It operates through three primary components, proportional integral derivative. The proportional P component is perhaps the most familiar. It controls the output in proportion to the current error, which is the difference between the target value and the actual value. This approach allows for the automatic control of a system, such as a pivot that needs to reach a specific angle. This method is effective for most systems. However, if the system you're going to control has significant inertia, which is the tendency of objects in motion to stay in motion, and objects at rest to stay at rest, then the proportional control alone might not suffice. For example, imagine you're driving a car at speed. When you try to brake suddenly, you don't instantly stop. This is due to inertia. To avoid missing your desired stopping point, you would brake before reaching your stopping point. This is where the derivative D component comes into play. Although we've skipped the integral for now, we'll come back to it. The derivative acts like a brake, slowing the system down before it overshoots the target thus combating inertia. Finally, let's discuss the integral I component. In my experience, this is the least used part of a PID controller, but it can be crucial in specific scenarios. The integral addresses the accumulation of error over time, which is the difference between the desired value and the actual value that persists. Consider a helicopter holding altitude. It's a relatively stable, but slightly off target due to gravity pulling it downward. The proportional control is trying to correct the altitude, but it's not strong enough to eliminate the error entirely. Increasing the proportional strength might make the system too erratic. This is where the integral component shines. It builds strength over time, continuously correcting the small, persistent error until the helicopter achieves the desired altitude. Tuning a PID controller. Now that we've covered the basics, let's talk about tuning a PID controller. While it may seem logical to rely on a graph displayed on a screen, I find it more effective to tune a PID by observing the system's behavior. This approach allows you to fine-tune the PID without overhauling your entire setup. Start by increasing the proportional value from a low starting point such as 0.1 and gradually increase it until the system starts oscillating, or if the system is strong enough. If you start it too high, dial it back. The higher the proportional value, the more responsive the PID, but also the harder it is to tune, and the more likely it is to become unstable. If the value is too high, the system may become impossible to stabilize, so proceed with caution. Also note that the starting values I mention are arbitrary, and may be too high or too low depending on your system. Next, tune the derivative. A good rule of thumb is to start with a derivative value, 10 times the tuned proportional value. Adjust it until the system slows down at the right time without overshooting or undershooting the target. If the derivative is too high, the system might slow down too early, then speed up again. If you see this happening, you know that the derivative value is too high. Lastly, consider the integral value. Though it's rarely needed, 
In cases where it's beneficial, like with the helicopter altitude example, start with a very low value, such as 0.001, and increase it until you see the PID correcting any residual error. How a PID works in depth and how it looks in code. Now that your PID controller is tuned, let's dive deeper into how each component of the PID works and how it can be implemented in code. The proportional component works by calculating the error, which is the difference between the target value and the current value. When the difference of error is large, the proportional component exerts a stronger influence, driving the system more forcefully towards the target. In other words, the further the current value is from the target, the stronger the corrective action. In code, this can be implemented by multiplying the error by the proportional gain and then adding this value to the control output. The derivative component works by calculating the rate of change of the error, determining how quickly the error is changing over time. It acts as a braking mechanism for the system as it approaches the target, resisting sudden changes and preventing overshoot. As the error decreases and the system gets closer to the target, the influence of the proportional component diminishes. However, the derivative components continue to apply a braking force without reducing its corrective action. This allows for it to effectively slow down the system, preventing it from overshooting the target. To implement this in code, Subtract the previous error from the current error to find the change in error, which is the delta error, and then multiply it by the derivative gain and then adding this value to the control output. The integral component addresses accumulated error over time. If there is a persistent error that the proportional and derivative components can't correct, the integral component will gradually increase its influence until the error is corrected. In code, this is achieved by accumulating the error over time, which is by summing it up in each iteration, and then multiplying its accumulated value by the integral gain, and then adding this value to the control output. Now that we've covered the fundamentals of PID controllers, what they are, how they work, and how to tune them, you can now apply PID controllers to a wide range of systems. We've also explored how to implement each component of a PID controller in code in case you want to write it in code rather than use the built-in one, assuming you're playing Stormworks. As you continue experimenting and applying PID controllers in various scenarios, remember that tuning it is as much an art as it is a science. Don't hesitate to adjust and iterate as needed to achieve the best results. With practice, you'll become more comfortable with PID tuning and better equipped to harness the full potential of these powerful control systems. Thank you for following along, and I hope this deep dive into PID controllers has been both informative and practical. Now, go ahead and apply what you've learned to take control of your systems with confidence. Hey! If you're interested in joining our community, there's links down below. And of course, my Steam Workshop is also linked down below in case you want to look at any of my creations.